WTF, why is everything rallying? It's been six weeks in a row and stocks just can't seem to stop going higher. But is that what normally happens over time? Look at these periods here. They're all hollow candles. So what the stock market's doing right now is not very unusual. Higher, 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 higher. Stocks like to go up. But it's almost like we have an everything rally happening right now. That's right. And everyone's all bold up. So if you think by the end of this year, we're going to be at 6,100, 6,000, 5,900. They think we're going to go up even more, which means, yes, this pattern's likely going to continue. It is starting to redline. So this weekend, we're going to go through and talk about all this. Make sure you watch all the way until the end because I have two hot tips for you that we're going to talk about. All right. So what do we do this week? Because that's probably exactly what you're wondering. Wondering, It's what I'm wondering myself. Uh, what do we do? Because uh, stocks are just going nonstop up. It's like a rocket ship. And right now, they're still trading like a beach ball that's been held above water. Let's remind you of what that means. That means that as long as we're above 565, they held stocks down, held them down. Now they finally got over and now they've bounced and they're going up. Hey, that's bullish. Yes, that's bullish. But now we're into extreme greed with six green weeks in a row. You're probably like, hey, when I go to the casino and I see uh, black happen six times in a row, I bet on red. Well, that's called the gambler's fallacy. And I think a lot of people right now are like unsure what to do. If you've not been participating in a meaningful way, and God forbid you've been short, uh, this has been extremely painful. Like I just showed you, stocks have gone like pretty much straight up. Out of all these candles, only a couple are actually red. We're definitely going high at an angle of ascent that is hard to maintain. But hey, uh, even Elon Musk did something this week that no one thought they could when he made that incredible landing. So the stock's going back into extreme greed here. What does this really mean? Well, it means that if we're going to get a sustained move higher, even if fear and greed is hard to dip from here, we've made it back into extreme greed. I'd like to see us shoot a little bit higher and then really just maintain. These are like the last two big times the stocks really went up. Again, like what I'm basically showing you here, those two really big runs. We're seeing the same thing repeat. So you don't want to fight it? Nope. Um, and if we look at this pattern here, as we continue, so as we go down, slope of hope, which means the bulls are going to be like, no, this time's different. Got to catch the knife, uh, toe dippers, right? Bottom feeders. Then as we go up, people get worried, right? They get worried because our accounts go up. And uh, I don't know. So we're going to be fighting between those two uh, those two narratives this week. There's not very much driving the economic calendar other than uh, the Bank of Canada set to cut by another 50 basis points on Wednesday and then initial jobless, job, jobless claims on Thursday. So what's going to drive trading this week? Why can we go mega big up even more? Well, because we got earnings. Let's have a look through and see exactly what those are looking for because you might not be surprised but every single company in here, it's a beat. So what we're looking for is the whisper number again. Whisper is not, um, it's not a guarantee, but if this number is greater than the consensus, that would mean that on earnings day, we're going to see a beat. So 3M, beat. Coca-Cola, beat. GM, beat. Raytheon, beat. Lockheed Martin, beat. GE, beat. Tesla, beat. That's a nice beat, by the way, too. 65 over 58, not bad. I thought they would mess. Um, American Airlines, wow, that's a nice number there. That's uh, that, that's a nice one. Um, UPS, beat. So they're all beats. So why can we keep going up? Um, because GDP is like really effing strong, right? WTF, why is GDP at 3.42? Um, I'll explain that in one second here. The reason might surprise you a little bit, but first I'm going to ask you for a huge favor. If you could please consider smashing that thumbs up or subscribing to the channel, I would greatly, greatly appreciate that. Thank you very much. So if we're trying to ask ourselves, like, why is everything so hunky-dory in the U.S. and it's not so great in the rest of the world? Well, look at this doozy of a headline here. This is from uh, Bloomberg on October 19th. So I'm recording this on the 20th. This is from yesterday. U.S. interest rate burden hits 20 year, 28 year high, escalating political risk. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that's not good. Nope. Um, that's not good. Here's another one from the 18th. Um, U.S. deficit tops $1.8 trillion in 2024 as interest rate on debt surpasses trillion dollar mark. Oh, boy. Uh, those are really big numbers. So remember, we talked about the market going um, into the election and then post-election. Hey, whoever's going to be president, they're going to have some trouble here. They got some problems. Is it going to happen this year, next year, into 2030? That part I do not know. But I'll show you what's really interesting here as it relates to the election and these couple of headlines here. Right now, is GDP is artificially strong because the U.S. is going mega burr at a cost of like super high interest burden. If you're not sure what this means, I'll show you a, uh, I don't want to drag this out too long, but I think there's a, a very quick graphic I could show you here. Here we go. 
All right, so let's look at these things here. I'm trying to just go back in time again. Bear with me for 30 seconds. And like I said, I do have those two hot tips for you. So I promise we'll get there. Just bear with me. If we look here to the U.S. Uh, national debt versus uh, the GDP, and that's right here. I don't know why we can't dismiss that thing. Anyways, uh, let's just go back. All right, come on, Justin, be fast. We feel people don't have a long attention span. All right, looking here, interest interest payments, $972 billion. Defense, 936 We're spending more money on interest or paying the visa than we do to defend ourselves. That's a problem. Yes. And right now, debt servicing is at 122. In 2000s, it was at 56. In 1980, it was at 35. So when everyone's like, is it the 1970s or the 2000s? Yes. Well, the debt is like way effing higher. So how can we be going up? How can people be excited as the world is crumbling financially? And what I mean by crumbling financially is these numbers become increasingly unaffordable as the debt gets higher. Every 1% of interest on $35 trillion, whoa. And that does not include all these other things, right? Total debt is $100 trillion. Credit card debt, right? We got all these huge red numbers here. Per person, can you afford $100,000? Per taxpayer, can you afford two seventy one? dollars That's what the U.S. owes. All right, now let's talk about making some money because if the U.S. is printing, there's probably some money-making opportunities out there. That's right. All right, so earnings are, uh, are a focus. So what's really happening here? The bar's been lowered. That's why companies are beating. It's likely why we're going to keep going higher. Um, the one thing I forgot to mention, too, is that it looks to me like on the VIX is that it's normally buy the hype, sell the news. Well, what it looks like so far is it's sell the hype, buy the news because people are worried there might not be a peaceful transition of power. Well, what if Trump wins? Of course, it's going to be peaceful. What do you mean? Well, people are worried that he's going to he's not going to win and then he's going to fight it. Well, what if he does win? There's going to be no fighting. Wouldn't that be like the opposite? It would be sell the rumor, buy the news. I'm not saying he's win. I'm not saying he's not going to win, but the market seems to be voting. And right now, it's a whole lot less worried than it was three weeks ago, even though the geopolitical landscape, the world looks a little bit less safe today than it did back then. So what does that mean? Um, take it for what it's worth. Um, you know, people in the comments will tell me if I'm right, right or wrong. Um, and on, on July 1st versus today, not that long ago, only a few months. Hey, 8.5% growth for this quarter down to five. Hey, that's easy to beat. That's why companies are beating. Right now, stocks are expensive, but they're not like egregiously expensive. I don't know, like S&P is like worth like what? Like 10% more, 10% premium? Hey, well, AI is something that only happens once in a lifetime. That's why this GDP is mega big strong. October uh, October 18th update for 3.42%. Um, higher certainty. The markets are trading uh, certain, are trading certainty with higher, trading, are trading certainty with higher conviction. All right. Tail risks of U.S. election, Middle East, and recession are being slashed. Again, that's sell the high, buy the news. That's what it looks like. Over here in China, they're like, yeah, time to go burr. Xi urges officials to work on growth targets in the first quarter. What does it mean? Make the lines go up, please. This is not enough. We went high. Now we went down. Now we got to go up more, more, more. Notably above 33. That's a key area for FXI in the monthly chart. So everyone's all bold up. So you're like, oh, my God, six weeks in a row for green. Yes. Well, it's already October 20th. And there's only like two... Two and, two and a little bit uh, months left until the end of the year. So how do we get to 6,100? That's a lot higher. Yes. Well, with 45 new highs so far in 2024, as of the 12th, um, 45 new highs out of 197 trading days so far this year. This means this ranks in the top percentile of new all-time highs and implies we're going to get uh, 12 more. We're going to get to 57 new all-time highs by the end, end of the year. Yes, and we've talked about this. We're now roughly two years into this current bull run. And it's up by 63%. On average, they go up by 191, the median 115. They last for roughly five years. That's right. That's on average. Is this time different? Hey, I don't know. I'm just happy when the lines go up. So for AI, we've talked about this before very fast. We're currently going through this bell curve of adoption. And if these things are launching, like ChatGPT, these new instances are good, we're going to see big improvements. I think there's a lot of demand for Apple's phone once it finally launches Apple AI. That'll be with earnings next week, and we'll talk about it then. ChatGPT was launched in uh, 2022. So how far are we into this? If it's if it's uh, 1999 or like 1997, that's a really big difference. That really impacts our our wallets. Yes, the U.S. is broke. Um, the U.S. is spending way too much money. In the 2000s, debt was 55. percent Now it's twice as high. It's like you've uh, doubled your balance on your visa. So as the interest rates go up, you're like, ouch, this is really painful. Yep. All right. So now let's talk about the bear case just before we get to those hot tips. So S&P's total return of 36% over the past three uh, past year is more than tripled historical norm. All right, here's the bear. Um, there's clear bull market uh, inequities and an epic bear market in rational thought. Yes, that's why it's called the hype cycle for AI. He's just like basically sell. 
Um, what if uh, shelter inflation does not come back down? That would mean the Fed would have to stay higher for longer. And both presidents are likely going to have an inflationary policy. Why? Just read this. U.S. interest burden at 20, 28 year high. Escalating political risk. Yes. And trillion dollar interest payments. Oh, my God. What are they doing? You think your interest payments high in your visa? All right. Remember, the only thing that's for sure is that nothing is for sure. So the Fed's uh, Fed, Fed is this is this is old news now, right? This is going back to September. You're like, ah, oh, that's like September. Yeah. What happened? We went even higher. Oh, we did talk about that. Yes, we did. And we also talked about how the market is currently overdue for a drop. On average, every 172 days, we go down by 10%. We had about 9.5. It's been 288 days since a true correction. So what do we do? Well, we make sure we strap in. We look for good ideas. And here's a, here's to you right now. It's Dexcom and uh, WBA. This is uh, Walgreens and Dexcom. These are for invest alerts. Uh, for Dexcom, we have continuation here. It's a four to risk, four risk reward. And for Walgreens, it's one to eight. Pause the video if you want to see the numbers. If not, maybe you want to come hang out with me at 9.15 a.m. on Monday, where we're going to go through and talk about these and everything else to get ready for the week. Thanks so much.